Hey guys, Miss Marcus here, and as you can see, we're back with some Master League today instead of uh, my, uh, my club, which will be later on today. And of course, as you can see, after the end of last episode, which was the Southampton Master League, we ended up winning the Champions League. I did a straw poll and I waited some time, or quite a long time actually, before eventually coming to my decision of taking Atletico Madrid's job. Now, I was going to stay at Southampton, but the straw poll actually came out to a tie between Southampton, Atletico Madrid, and then there were two votes for Arsenal, and then two votes, uh, four votes for Arsenal, four votes for beginning of another team. So I went, nah, why stay in the Premier League? There's no point. Let's go to somewhere different. So we decided to go to Atletico Madrid in Spain. And Atletico Madrid, of course, they qualified for the Champions League by finishing third in the league behind Real Madrid and Barcelona, as you'd expect. And as you can see, Right here, you're now the manager of Atletico Madrid. This is where your next adventure begins. So, I don't know how long how long I'm going to continue this series because, of course, PES 2016 news will be coming out soon, most likely around E3 time in the beginning of June. So, of course, let's just basically come to the point of beginning this thing. So, as you can see here, ending the season with it's just sort of saying stuff like that. And as you can see there, Real Betis, Celta de Vigo, and SD Porn Ferrarardina got relegated and Elche, Ibar and Zaragoza I think got promoted. But as you can see here in the team it's just pretty dreadful. Other than Griezmann, Koke and basically Arda Turan. The majority of the team is quite old. Jimenez is quite young as well at the centre back. Ansaldi and Juan Fran are quite old and uh, Jan Oblak and Go is actually quite young as well. So pretty young team but like that Jimenez guy up front is pretty bad and Jimenez at the back is alright but he's not that good Miranda's like 30 years old or whatever it's a bit bit weird I mean the team is quite old and, and it of course doesn't have all the players it should have like likes of Fernando Torres and whatnot which is who I actually go out and buy in this episode just before I tell you anything else but as well of the fact I was meant to be doing a Portugal uh, European Championships so I actually went on and won it as you can see if you go back like a couple minutes like maybe a minute ago it went over like what I did what I achieved last season I actually won the Portugal uh, the champion, the Euro European Championships with Portugal, but unfortunately for me, it just basically the the video got corrupted, and I won it like very comfortably, just beating France in the final two 0 Ronaldo scoring both goals. Ronaldo scored like fifteen goals or something in it, and he actually lifted the trophy and everything. So it was quite cool. I actually made a thumbnail and everything, but the video that show uh, file got corrupted. So unfortunately, I cannot show you that. But it was only going to be two episodes anyway, so it wasn't going to be too much in that thing anyway. But in today's episode, it's basically two matches from the start of the league of BBVA, and then the rest of it is just me selling and buying players, and of course trying to improve the squad in in general, to be honest. But like, there are a lot of players, like the likes of Devenko and Christian Rodriguez and whatnot, who are all turning over 30, maybe 31, 32 years old, and a lot of players who are actually just 30 in general, which was just really, really annoying. So I went out and actually bought some players. Of course, I bought Fernando Torres back, as you can see here, a 32-year-old striker now, but. He's Fernando Torres, so of course I had to buy him, but I didn't end up spending uh, like 10 or 15 million on him. I ended up spending, I think it's about 8 million on him while giving away one of the other players, something who is, I think it's this M MG Caddy guy, and I think it's 8 million, roughly about 8 million that I ended up giving away, and which is actually alright, it isn't too bad for someone of Fernando Torres' style, who probably end up playing not the, every single match, but probably play every every match every once in a while, because he's a pretty decent, he's still a pretty decent player, he's not too highly rated, so of course I can still get another player in, maybe around January time, for getting that in terms of, well, in terms of that basically. In this one, I was actually trying to buy, if I remember correctly, Kurt Zuma, while giving, from Chelsea, trying to give uh, Christian Ansladi away, and I and Saldi away and the left back and I just thought nah I'll just say uh, I'll get I'll give them and Saldi but I'll end up getting Kurt Zuma for a pretty decent thing which I actually do end up getting for only about eight million as well which isn't that bad either. I also went out to back to my my former side of course Southampton and bought Morgan Schneiderlin for like seven or eight million. It was absolutely ridiculous. I didn't give them any players or anything. I was trying to give away some players. I think I tried to give them. If I remember correctly, it's, I don't actually have a clue who it is. I think it's Thiago or Roman, it's Roman Nandino first and then Thiago later on. And I was like, both of them were like getting ancient. And I thought, nah, it's no point. I'll just, I'll, I'll just buy him out completely for like 8.5 million or roughly and give him like a couple million because he sort of deserves it. And I sort of need another defense midfielder anyway. So five year contract for Morgan Schneiderlin. I also went out and bought uh, Andre Pierre Zizniak from, uh, to, uh, not Toulouse, from, I think he's from, he's maybe at Marseille. And I get him again for like something about seven or eight million, which is pretty decent for a thirty year thirty year old player. And he's actually a really good player. I've always been good with Zizniak in any 
PES game, like literally any PES game. So I went out my way and bought him as well. So that wasn't that wasn't too bad. So getting two strikers in, basically giving away like two strikers who are slightly older than the players that I'm actually buying. And of course getting in some youngsters as well as this dude here. We end up getting a Gaia, the left back, the 70 rated left back who should, should be a lot higher rated. He's actually really highly rated in real life, but for every reason in Pez, he's only rated 80, 70 after like two seasons. So I end up go out and buy him. I end up getting him for like 2 million or something ridiculously cheap like that. When in reality, he's going for like 18 million and stuff in Valencia. We don't want to sell him, which is just ridiculous. So as you can see, I end up getting him, I think it's for like 2.5 million. I give him like 700 grand and that's what you expect. So stuff like that and I end up getting looking at the list of offers for other teams for the European teams and the uh, national teams I decide not to go for anyone because there's no point going for anyone because the European the World Cup of course would be next year next season's one rather than the season coming up now so of course um, there's no point taking a international team up so as you can see here five new players join the squad those players are Kurt Zuma, Fernando Torres, Andrei Pierzejniak, Gaia and Morgan Schneidlin. So of course Schneidlin will go straight into my team. Gaia as well goes straight into the left back because of course I sold Ansaldi and the only other player I have is Sequeira and probably up front I'll probably either play Fernando Torres or Andrea Pierzejniak. So of course in this in this video today of course I said like I said there are two matches from the league of the UVA the first two matches of the league of course and of course having to get used to playing with these sort of players again and well trying to play the game in general trying of course playing a lot online recently rather than playing a lot of stuff which is offline so as you can see here we start sort of started Antoine Griezmann is the captain because he's my best player which is what I usually do with my teams playing my best player as the captain which is always good and for some reason with with the league of BBVA I know it's a like that technically it's semi-licensed in a way because of course you don't have all the stadiums and whatnot but you have like the team names and all that sort of stuff but the for some reason like some of the matches I had stuff at the beginning like this where I could where you see the team like come out well the team always come out but you always see the you don't usually see the, the formations and whatnot which is quite weird it's sometimes it happens sometimes it doesn't I don't actually know why it happens but when it does happen it makes it look it just makes my life a lot easier because I don't have to bother showing the uh, game management uh, squad you know what I'm talking about that that sort of thing so as you can see here, the, it basically it's, it's of course it's the debut of the season, so I'm expecting it to be shown anyway. But of course here, as you see here, the grand of the team: Alaza, Balan, Goal, and Lewis, Martins, uh, Etuda, Jamie, Carl Loss. I mean, it's as you'd expect. It's just some random people I've never actually heard of because I'm not really into the league of BBVA, unfortunately. But I have likes of Koke, and I know I know uh, Alessio Churchy, who's absolutely fantastic. He was so good for me in PES 2013. But as you see there, Geyer, Schneiderlin, Correa starts. So it's Churchy and Griezmann and Fernando. Fernando Torres up front, so that's pretty decent. Four one two three formation, so basically it all sort of sits down on Morgan Schneidel and having to sit there and defend properly, which is interesting because he's a more box to box guy. Even though it says he's a destroyer, he really does like getting forward a lot more than you actually think, which is a bit interesting to see that sort of dynamic get played out across this season. Maybe I'll change the formation at halftime, at, at halftime, at half half through the season or something. But as you see on the seventeenth minute of the match, here Koki gets away from his player, gets a shot away. It's a pretty decent shot, but it goes just wide of the post. And all the way up into the second half, I'm not sure if I'll even bother showing the stats from the half time anymore because there's just no point anyway. And Fernando Torres gets a shot away, it's a pretty decent save from the goalkeeper Ola Zabal, who ends up basically doing nothing with the ball. But about 10 minutes later, Fernando Torres on the ball plays in Alice Alessio Churchy, and Churchy takes a shot away and gets a strike, and it's a pretty decent goal from Alessio Churchy to give us a 1 0 lead with about 20 minutes left on the clock. So, a pretty decent opportunity. And a pretty decent goal for Alessio Churchy. So he, of course, scores our first goal in the in the league. And as you see here in the 77th minute of the match, Fernando Torres runs past with two or three players, gets a strike away, and he himself pops it in for his first goal back in the colours of Atletico Madrid. And scoring at the Estadio del Nuevo Triunfo. And pretty scoring a pretty decent goal, which is pretty good as well, which is always good to see. In the 86th minute of the match, here, Koke just gets the ball opportunity, gets, a, gets just finesse shots into the back of the net to make it 3 0 to us. And on our basically our debut in the league of BBVA, which is absolutely fantastic. And as we see here in the 95th minute of the match, Church and above there, it's a really good tackle from Jimenez. I think it's Jimenez because it's got a G I M E N E Z. So as you see there from the stats at the end of the match, eight shots, five on target. Fernando Torres man of the match, pretty decent. So of course I'll show you the league table at the end of the end of the episode. But into our last match and basically last like two or three minutes of this episode. 
to get this away to Getafe and again it's, it's an Estadio del Nuevo Trinfo because I haven't edited any of the club sides for their proper stadiums I'll probably do that in the next episode or the episode after but right, a big thing of course is Athletic Madrid have qualified for the Champions League so again it's one of those things try and win the Champions League maybe try and win the league maybe win the Copa del Rey see where the situation is at the end of this year and then go on from there so as we see here it's a interesting thing again it shows us this, the thing at the beginning i'm sure it's maybe down to the stadium names because sometimes it happens when the stadiums don't have the thing when they're not edited and sometimes it is so it's always interesting in that sort of thing but again like they have a they have a, a proper kit and it's actually good to play with proper kits as well i was gonna i was actually really tempted to move to roma just because i know that like everything is basically licensed in the cdr except for the CDB teams who aren't licensed and of course they don't have all the stadiums but they have they actually do have some licensed stadiums but in the guitar I, like i was just like nah it came to the point where i was just like no i'll just just go to athletic madrid but as you see here in Getafe, they actually have castolis playing at attacking midfield which is quite interesting considering that he's one of those youth team players you can get for like, the first two years and then if you well, the first year and if you don't get him then he just disappears usually but fortunately well, unfortunately for me he actually went to Getafe. But as you see here, I actually gave it Andre Pierzyzhnak his uh, first team debut in this match against Getafe, just to see what it was like playing for a different striker up front. And my god, he is pretty good. He's a pretty decent striker, but it's going to probably take him quite some time for me to get back to used to playing with him, because I've not played with him for a year since the last time I played with him properly was in PES 2013 rather than PES 2014. But whenever I play online, I always play with Marseille, and Marseille just destroy. I always destroy with him. It's really weird, but going all the way up to the 76th minute of this match literally nothing happened in the first half there's a really good header for i think it was arda turan and it comes out to this basically comes out to schneider and heads it down to koke koke runs past lassen who can't seem to do anything about it koke gets it into the box as you'd expect and koke just pings it into the back of the net to give us a 1-0 lead with about 10 minutes left this game was the most boring game of football you'll ever see even the stats will agree with me as we see here in the 93rd minute of the match they just play the ball a bit for a bit they end up getting up now we get an opportunity but kurt zuma pops in with a pretty decent slight tackle actually and gives us a 1-0 lead to basically start our season off absolutely fantastically as you'd expect but as you still i can see there it's only eight shots in the game three of which were on target but as you see here from the table we are top of the table so if you have enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel for more and catch you later